From the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive, this is 8700. Hello, welcome to this month's episode of 8700. I'm Rick Martin. Thanks for joining me. With me today, I want to introduce to you my special guest, Ms. Jennifer Leersch. She's Chief Deputy Commissioner of Tax and Tags. Is that correct? Yes. All right, awesome, awesome. You know, really want to, want to thank you for taking the time. I know how busy you are at this time of the year. For years, Douglas County Tax Commissioner's Office was located on the second floor of the uh, courthouse mm -hmm. here at 8700. But soon things will be changing. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, we are extremely excited. The first week, possibly second week of May, we will be moving. And we'll be moving to a building that was already pre-existing. It's actually 6200 Fairburn Road. And it's the old John Bleakley RV building. And we are extremely excited for this move. Wow. How would customers uh, really benefit from this move? One of the biggest changes that they're going to see when they come into the office is we now will have a queuing system that they will have the ability to sit down and wait instead of standing in the lines and waiting for the next clerk to call. And there will be four TVs that they'll be able to view the numbers on as well as speakers that will call out the numbers as well. Wow, tell me this has got to create a, a different environment uh, from before. Is that what you're going for? Yes, we actually want to improve our services. We always want to improve and better what we offer our citizens. This queuing system will do just that, as well as it will keep track for the transactions of the clerks. So we will be able to monitor how quickly they're getting customers in and out with each transaction. And this will better us as taxpayers and as clerks for each person and transaction that happens in our office. And what's the address again? It is 6200 Fairburn Road. Okay. And that was the old Blakely building, wasn't it? Correct. It was a pre-existing structure that they have now added on to. And we are very excited. We cannot wait to move. It's been years in the making for us. So, you know, one of the things people always think about when they have business to take care of and they want to go to a department or so, uh, tell me a little bit about parking. We will have actually more parking than what we will have available here when it is jury duty days. We will have 100 parking spots for the public to have, and that will give them direct access into our building. Wow, so what was the motivation behind this? The motivation mainly was for court space. They needed more room for expansion. Okay. And then also as well, we needed more storage. And so this was the best solution to make both offices you know, have more space. Gotcha, gotcha. So uh, you're anticipating a lot more people, probably? Yes. We're hoping that in the future we can grow and we can have this expansion has given us more clerks, more available windows. So we're going to be able to hopefully offer the public more transactions per minute by giving them more clerks. So with transactions said, of course, that comes with money, I imagine. Yes. Um, Tell me a little bit about that. Um, what other departments uh, are taking part? I understand you're taking different steps. Yes, we actually will have security at our new location, which is something that we're very thankful for. We want to thank you know Sheriff Ten Pounds for allowing us to have a security in our location, and they will be stationed on the first floor, and they will be monitoring um, money that's coming in, any taxpayers, any clerks. We also will be having the tax assessors also in this building. They will be on the second floor above us and we will be on the first floor. But that just gives us that extra security to help protect the citizens as well as the clerks and as well as the money that's coming through. We definitely want to protect the county's money, the citizens' money. We don't want them to feel insecure or worried that something could happen. So this is just going to add that stability for them. Awesome, awesome. I mean, you know, it's one of the... <coughs> Whenever you have uh, uh, new buildings, mm -hmm. um, departments uh, uh, that are working together, one of the most important things that people often don't think about are restrooms, public restrooms. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. We will actually have public restrooms in our new location, and we'll have three stalls in each 
um, the men's and the women's. And so that's something that's very nice. I think people will appreciate as well. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You know, uh, what I want to talk about is something that maybe not a lot of people uh, know about mm -hmm. the uh, tax office. Mm -hmm. Your department, as I recently learned, conducts tax sales. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. A tax sale only happens when we have a delinquent taxpayer not pay their taxes and a lien then gets recorded against them. We do not sell properties until a lien gets recorded and then the process will start. Notification will go out to the taxpayer. It'll go out to multiple addresses as well as if there are renters on the property, it goes to the property and the resident or tenant on the property. So there's plenty of notification that goes out. We also post a sign in the property two weeks before the sale just to alert the taxpayer if maybe they did not pick their mail up or get the certified letters that there is notice that this property will sell. And we sell the property, we do not sell the lien. And we start the bid out at what taxes are currently due on that property. And then, depending on who is bidding, it can go up from there. Oh, which is pretty different from what I understand from other uh, counties in the area, is yes. that correct? Yes, some counties sell just the liens. Okay. They do not actually have the property transaction sale. Okay. We do not do that in Douglas County. We sell the property, and it's something that we've done for many, many years, and it's just to safeguard the county and not have a third party involved. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, tell me, when's the next tax sale? We actually have May 1st. It's the first Tuesday in May. We hope to could possibly be moving at that time. So okay. it'll be something that we'll have to come back to the courthouse to do because they actually have to happen on the courthouse steps. Okay. So since we are moving locations, we will have to come back here each tax sale that okay. we have. So things could change, but yes. we're looking at May 1st yes. for the next scheduled tax sale. Mm -hmm. um, list of properties for the sale, I guess will have to be available early. Yes. Will they be available online? Yes, they actually will. I am actually the one who uploads those, so I will <laughs> upload an Excel spreadsheet, and I will do that about four weeks before the sale, and then also, by law, it has to go in the local paper, so it will also be in the Douglas County Sentinel starting four weeks before the sale, and it will go in the Wednesday's paper. Okay, okay, well, great, so you're making, you know, obvious outreach and engaging yes. the public, letting them know what's going on. When are tax bills mailed to property owners? We typically try to mail mid-September on or around September 15th. That is our goal to hit every year. And then they are by law due within 60 days of that mail date. So that's typically November 15th. Okay. Now I know you provide the public information on the county government website. Yes. CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. What are your plans on further communicating with the public on tax related matters? One of the things that we're really excited about that we're looking into is starting a Facebook page for the Tax Commissioner's Office. This page will hopefully give everyone the information they need. Social media has become something that is reaching out farther than just a web page. So I think that the Facebook page would be very beneficial and it would help others to also know our current wait times. We hope to be able to post our queuing system wait time live on the Facebook page. We also do employee of the quarters and so we would love to be able to put our employee of the quarters picture on there and give them some recognition for the hard work that they're doing as well. And then as we also would like, would like from time to time to do live video feeds so they could uh, see what's currently going on in the tax office or the tax tag office and the wait and just to kind of introduce people to our new location as most people may not be able to view it beforehand. Now you mentioned the tag office there. Mm -hmm. um, recently you took some steps, I understand, to, to help uh, convenience, was mm -hmm. that, for, for uh, car registration mm -hmm. uh, tags and, and held a uh, tag ribbon cutting ceremony, yes. which I saw. Tell me a little bit about what was, uh, uh, what brand new uh, machine you had. This is a tag renewal kiosk. Okay. And, and what a lot of people don't know about these kiosks is you can use them for any participating county in there. We actually had an employee in our office who needed to renew her mother's tag, and her mother lives in Cobb County. She was not able to leave work, so she went to the tag renewal kiosk and renewed her tag here at the courthouse. Wow. And so that is something that is very beneficial and that it's not advertised a lot, but it is something that is helpful 
if we can get the word out. Okay. So tell me, will this kiosk that mm -hmm. is located at the courthouse, and from mm -hmm. what I understand, there's one at Kroger as well? Correct. And the Kroger is available 24-7. So if we are not open or it's on the weekend or if it's after hours, they can go straight to the Kroger and renew it. As long as they have their emissions and their correct paperwork in line, it should renew perfectly fine. Okay. Will the kiosk that's located at the courthouse, will mm -hmm. that move as well to the, the new location? Yes. The plan is okay. to have it move. We will have an entrance lobby area. Um, that is where the public restrooms will be. And we hope to be able to put it there so people don't even have to come into the tax commissioner's office. They can do it right there in the lobby. Okay, great, great. Jennifer, it's been such a delight um, uh, to, to have you, you know, tell me so much about the uh, tax and tag. Uh, commissioner's office. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, yourself in terms of where are you from? I'm actually a Douglas County native. I have been here my whole life. I have gone to school here. I now have family and they are going to school here and I pride myself in Douglas County. This is my home and wow. I love everything about it. So it's a joy to be able to contribute here as well. Where'd you go to high school? I went to Harvester Christian Academy off Central okay. Church Road. Okay. And then I also attended Mercer University off Thornton Road. I did night school. Okay. And while I was doing night school is when I started working here, actually. And I started in the tax assessor's office first and moved my way up and became a real property appraiser and then also a personal property appraiser and okay. then moved to the tax commissioner's office as the admin and then the tax manager and now the chief deputy. So it's been a it's been a move up for me, which is great. And I love what I do. And that's a really inspirational story because it shares uh, a lot for others who may be, uh, you know, coming up right. you know, in the future generation. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a family. I do. I have three children. I have two boys and a girl. Okay. And it's, they're six, four, and two. So we are very busy <laughs> all the time. But I love it. It's... We have just started in kindergarten this past year with my oldest, and that's been an awakening for us, just being in school and having that experience. But we love Douglas County Schools, so okay. we couldn't have asked for a better location for my son. So, Awesome. Well, I can't thank you enough for joining us. I really appreciate that. A lot of valuable information provided for our citizens. We talked about GIS with Jennifer Lersch, but joining me now in the studio is GIS manager Edward Dean here. Edward, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you well, taking the time. Me. Great. You know, in an interview I was doing with uh, Jennifer Lersch of the uh, tax commissioner's office, we had mentioned GIS. So often uh, people talk about GIS, but what does GIS stand for? A lot of people don't know. It's a uh, geographic information systems. So basically GIS, we take geospatial data and we link it with descriptive data, tabular data. And when we do this, we allow people to quickly access data, they can query the data, and they can analyze data. And by doing this, they can make informed decisions in the areas such as planning, transportation, um, tax assessments, land management, and public safety. So it's not just Google. We, we do, that's just one aspect. <laughs> that's just one aspect. So, so GIS, that can be, I mean, is it a service that benefits the public? Yes, yes. Really? By taking the information, we can put this information on a map and show people where things are happening, where, you know, like Douglas County happenings. We can make an application that says, hey, during these dates, this is what's going on in the county and where it's happening. So people know where it's happening, if it's close to them, if they want to attend. Wow, so they can see in terms of the locations, maybe how close or how far, and then help decide whether they can make it sure. uh, and, and plan their day out. Sure. Wow, wow, so tell me a little bit about how can they find this resource? Well, on, we have a page on the Celebrate Douglas County website. You go to GIS, there's a, um, we have all of our mapping applications there. Um, and we have, we, when we first started, we had two applications there. Now we have nine. 
So now we have applications where people can go and find their polling places when they go to vote. You can find your, who's your elected representatives, your commissioners, um, what precincts you're in, uh, commission districts you're in. We also have applications that uh, promote tourism. You know, we have a lot of filming that goes on in the county and we have made an application where people can go and see the location of where things have been filmed, what uh, movies have been filmed, TV shows. Um, and we also just, our latest application uh, we did was for the SPLOS, for all the SPLOS projects. We made an application that citizen, citizen, citizens can go to and see the applications or the projects that are going on and um, see where their tax dollars are going. Wow. Man, this is a, a really uh, interesting uh, dynamic of, of a way people can, can really use and get answers to where things are. How did you come about doing this? Well, I first started off working with a civil engineering company doing drafting and stuff like that. And then we started doing some GPS mapping. You know, so we would go out with these big old things on our back and, you know, find locations of different assets. And then that's where I came about GIS. And I was like, what is this GIS? And looked into it, um, found out there was a degree that you could get a degree in it. Um, so wait a second. You're telling me you can get a degree in geographic information systems? Yes, sir. Kennesaw State University. Wow. Wow. So, so uh, I went there, um, got my degree in 2013, and, uh, and here I am. All right, right. How long have you been with Douglas County? Uh, f going on four years now, um, but previously I was here for two years, left, and then came back. So altogether, going on six years. Okay, six years. And I guess in six years' time, uh, given you know, your experience in terms of mapping and um, seeing um, Douglas County itself, uh, is, it, is it growing in terms of uh, businesses, in terms of geographic areas and, and landmarks? Um, I would say yes, the, we're starting to grow again. Okay. Um, we're starting to see new um, subdivision plats come in and we're putting those in, um, new businesses coming in. Um, not as, we're not growing in area. You know, we're mm -hmm. not growing out, mm -hmm. but we are, I, th I believe, um, with the economy starting to grow, I think um, that we're starting to move forward again. Tell me a little bit, describe for me a little bit, please, so our viewers can understand some of the benefits uh, to, to GIS. How do you can utilize that in more detail? Well, you can use, like we were talking about earlier, um, we, our main job in our office is to keep up with the parcel information. Um, so we have a property information website that you can go to and you can get all the information about a piece of property in one place okay. on our website. Okay. Um, so that's, that's the biggest benefit, I believe, that we provide. We give them where they're at and all your property information. Um, that's one thing. Um, and just going on like um, the voting applications that we have, um, it's just showing people where things are and um, how they can get involved and uh, find out information, you know. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's the benefit. Awesome, awesome. Do you find yourself working collaboratively, I should say, with other departments in the county? Yes. Tell we me a are, bit about that. We are closely related to or associated with um, the appraisal department. Uh, so they, we actually take their data and port it into our data, and that's where we put all the information out on our property information website. And also we collaborate with the tax office as well um, with that website. We take information from the tax um, office as well. So speaking of that, I guess, you know, your office has been located in the Douglas County Courthouse for a few years now. Um, and you guys are moving. Sure. Right, okay. How are you, what, what, what's your reaction to that? 
I love the move. Right, I love right. the move. So th- you're moving into the Blakely, bu- the former Blakely building. Sure. Uh, I think it's, uh, for our department, I think it's good. We're getting a little bit more room. We can spread out a little bit. Um, our, uh, our employees, our analysts there, they, they're really happy about that. How many employees are in the office there? We have two other employees, okay. and, they're, and they're wonderful. They, they make my job a whole lot easier. So, Are members of the public, are they able to, what, physically come see you or? Yes. Okay, yes. okay. okay. so you're, you're, you're open to the public if people wanted to come. Yes. Okay. We are, most of the time they start in a different department um, and then they come to us. You know, if they have a discrepancy with their property or if they need an address, we also, in our department, we handle all the addressing for the county. So if you need an address, um, you come to us to wow. get your address. So you handle all the address to properties in Douglas County? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so we, so if you go to the appraisal department, you have discrepancy with your property, um, you're having a split or you're combining some property, you bring us the documentation and then we draw it up for you and then put it on our website. Wow. So if you have a change in address, if you're a homeowner and you have a change in address, um, I guess it's pretty important that they contact you. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Is there, what, can you tell me a little bit about the process that they would, because uh, I'm, I'm imagining, I don't know if you had a situation where um, a homeowner lives on one lot of land and they decide to purchase the next door neighbor's home after they move. Sure. Knock down both homes and they want to create one larger property per se. So okay. if they had two addresses before but now they want to form one with that big piece of land um, they would have to contact you they would have to contact us we would basically keep one of those addresses and then deactivate the other address Uh, so that's how that would work but yes they would have to contact us is there a a process do they fill out an application for new addresses it all begins in the um Building Services Department, oh, okay. they start there. And when they start their process, the second step is to come to us to get the address. And then when you get your address, then they have other steps that they have to follow. Okay. But Because uh, you can't really do anything without your address. Right, right. So GIS, man, I, I, are there other counties that have a department just called GIS as well? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Most most uh, counties and cities have a okay. GIS department. Okay. A lot of times there might be one person shops in the smaller mm-hmm. cities, but uh, our neighbor, Cobb County, they have a pretty robust, nice. big gotcha. department. Gotcha. So. Awesome. If there was something that you really wanted the public to know about GIS and the services you offer and render, what would that be if there was one thing? That you think they don't know, they don't take advantage of. They don't, you know, really um, know that it could be so helpful to them. The one thing I would say is we do more than just print out maps. Okay. We actually create web applications, you know, where you can actually go to a website and look at this information. Um, now, we do create you know, I think a lot of great maps that we do print out, um, but we do a lot more than just printing out maps. And GIS is a lot more than, you know, just printing out maps. You know, you have to know a little bit about web design. You have to know, know a little bit about um, databases. Um, we're querying data every day. And if you don't know the um, syntax mm-hmm. or the, and how to write those, you don't know what what's going on. So uh, I think that's, that's one thing when people just look, hey, GIS, we create, you know, nice looking maps, but we do a lot more than just that. Wow. Well, this is great. I really appreciate it. Uh, Ed, you know, taking the time to join us and giving us an opportunity to share what GIS, Geographic Information <laughs> Systems, is yes. about for uh, uh, members of the community. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And I want to thank you for joining us this, for this month's episode of 8700. I'm Rick Martin. See you next time.